there really is no such thing as a new guitar. So this is supposed to be a guitar channel. It says so right in the name of the channel, J. Salen Guitar. The way it works is I buy a guitar and review it, you watch it, comment, and so on and so on. In fact, I've done around 30 guitar reviews since the channel started in 2022. Half of those reviews were done this year alone. The most recent review I did for the Epiphone SG was probably the most different style of guitar that I've reviewed. Most of my reviews have been either Dreadnought, Acoustic Guitars, or Stratocaster style guitars. Check out Amazon and among the cheapest guitars, most of them are Strat style guitars. So I was thinking about it the other day, wondering what is the point of buying guitars to review only to turn around and sell them at a loss to just buy another guitar to review only to turn around and sell it at a loss and well, you get the idea. In fact, I just did a video about how much money you tend to lose on a guitar when you sell it, even a new guitar, despite people saying that brand name guitars hold their value. Then Guitar Max put out a video talking about the very same thing just a few days ago, that regardless of the brand or model of guitar, when you turn around and sell it, you tend to lose money. That is the core of one of the issues small channels have when it comes to reviewing gear. We aren't sponsored, we don't have the latest guitar models sent to us to review before they're available to the public, so we end up doing reviews on guitars that are already out there. So the question becomes, what's the point? Why bother reviewing guitars at all? And if you think about it, there are no new guitars anyway. Think about the Stratocaster. Leo Fender invented the Stratocaster in 1954. The Stratocaster turned 70 years old this year. And you know what it looked like back in 1954? Yep, same way it looks in 2024. In fact, the Stratocaster guitar is so iconic that other companies copy the design. When people want a guitar, they choose either a Fender Stratocaster, a Telecaster, a Gibson Les Paul, or a Gibson SG. These guitars haven't changed in decades. Sure, the Strat Bridge has a two-point tremolo on it now and locking tuners and they use fancy top wood occasionally. But think about it, Fender re-releases or reissues old style guitars with the same vintage tuners, saddles, etc. They literally copy themselves. I can't think of too many goods that have been simply frozen in time and still function as they should, are still sought after and used regularly. Cars are drastically different than when they were first widely available. If you took a modern car back to the time the Model T was being sold, people wouldn't know what it was. Take a Stratocaster guitar, however, back to 1954, and everyone would still know what it was and how to use it. In fact, they could even plug it into their amp and start making music. Take a modern smartphone back in time to even just the 1970s and no one would know what it was. In fact, the acoustic guitar is even older. There have been almost zero advances in acoustic guitar technology since they were invented. The Martin Dreadnought is over 100 years old. You could walk into Sweetwater or Guitar Center, buy a Martin D28, hop in your DeLorean, go back to 1920, and musicians would be able to sit down immediately and start playing. It's like a hammer or a stapler. Sure, there have been attempts to improve the guitar. There's carbon fiber guitars and digital guitars and key tar and travel guitars and smart guitars. But at the end of the day, those are merely novelties and the guitar itself continues to be a timeless instrument. So here's a photo of Taylor Swift, probably one of the most popular singer-songwriters of the past couple decades, and she's playing a Gibson acoustic jumbo. Here she is with a Gibson Dreadnought. Here's the artist, her, with a Fender Stratocaster. In fact, she has her own signature Stratocaster model. Even Tim Henson of Polyphia, who plays progressive style guitar music and coined the term boomer bends to denote old guy guitar playing, plays a six string Strat style Ibanez. Up and coming guitarist Grace Bowers is only 18 years old and is most often seen playing a Gibson SG. She was born in 2006. You'd think of all people she would be playing a modern instrument. The SG was developed by Gibson in 1961. She's playing a 63-year-old instrument. So what does all this have to do with guitar reviews and my channel? Well, I feel like I'm simply reviewing the same guitar over and over again. And largely I am when I review Strat-style guitars. Just about every Strat-style guitar I've ever played, regardless of brand or cost, sounds pretty much the same. They all look the same, they feel the same, they sound the same. In fact, they are the same. And that's the point. 
the Chinese manufacturers are copying success and they've done a pretty good job of it. They can build a guitar that is every bit as good as a Fender made guitar and sell it for $200 or less. And you can argue that USA made Fenders are superior and that the Chinese guitars are crap all you want. But at the end of the day, aside from using some cheaper materials, they are for all intents and purposes, the same. You can search YouTube and find countless examples of $100 guitars up against $3,000 guitars, and they sound pretty much the same. In blind tests, people can't tell the difference. Sure, the neck profiles might vary, the type of wood will be different, but modern production techniques have leveled the playing field. So the question is, why do we even buy new guitars? Why are we spending thousands of dollars for Gibson Les Paul or Fender American II Stratocasters when we could just as easily buy a $100 guitar from Amazon? Why? Status. That's why. Plain and simple. We want the same guitar we see Taylor Swift or Paul McCartney or Eddie Van Halen play. And guitar makers know it. Why do you think there are so many signature models out there? Earlier this year, Gibson reissued the double neck SG patterned after the model Jimmy Page played. That guitar costs $50,000. Again, Gibson going back and making a guitar that looks exactly like a guitar made over 50 years ago. The Epiphone inspired by Gibson line, same thing. Squire Classic Vibe, same thing. They grab us with limited edition, inspired by Gibson, so-and-so signature model, and we buy it. I could go on Goodwill auctions right now find a Squire Stratocaster from 1995 and a PV amp from the same year, and they would sound just like every other amp and guitar that you could buy right now at Guitar Center. Sure, amps nowadays have Bluetooth and all kinds of digital effects that can mimic every pedal ever imagined, uh, but the basic technology of a guitar and an amp hasn't changed in over 60 years. My first electric guitar was the Skylark that I reviewed on my channel and a PV Rage 15 watt solid state amp. The guitar was given to me by my older brother and the amp cost uh, about $100 a brand new. I could have stopped there and played that guitar to this very day with the same amp. Of course, I couldn't have gigged with that amp because it wasn't powerful enough. But I also remember buying a rack mount digital uh, guitar effects processor in the early 90s and it sounded amazing. It did everything modern multi-effects pedals do. I could have kept that, the Skylark, the PV amp, and never needed another piece of gear in my entire life. Unfortunately, life tends to get in the way of our musical progress and I ended up selling all that stuff so I could become a productive member of society. It wasn't until over 10 years ago in my early 40s that I picked up the guitar again. And since then I've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars chasing tone and trying to get the latest technology only to find that it hasn't changed. We have amp models now and guess what they copy? Actual amps. Old school amps from the 60s. For all our tone chasing, it has brought us right back to the beginning. The foundation. A guitar and a distorted amp. So if you're a young person just getting into playing guitar, go to Goodwill Auctions or eBay or whatever, spend 50 or 60 bucks on a used Squire, or maybe a little bit more on a Made in Mexico Fender Stratocaster or even a Yamaha or Ibanez. Get a PV amp, forget all the tubes and all that stuff, get a cheap multi-effects pedal, and then play your ass off. And don't stop playing. If I had done that, I'd probably be 10 times the player I am now and would be making videos about actually playing guitar instead of videos about buying guitars. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jace Allen. We'll see you next time.